Hello, hello there. Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are doing great. I am excited to be here this week for this training, and I'm doing this as I cut some cheese. Um, but I wanted to get on here this week to talk about designing sacred spaces for our children. And I was inspired to share this today because we've gone through quite a week in our home with our children. And one of the reasons, the main reasons why I started the sacred design journey and really the sacred path of spiritual lifestyle, of surrounding myself with beauty in my home and really paying attention to how my home felt intentional I started that journey through motherhood. I started that journey through being pregnant, having a miscarriage. I started that journey through giving birth at home, having a conscious pregnancy and designing a space that didn't just look good because I wanted it to look good, but designing a home that felt good, that felt safe, that felt secure, that felt um, nourishing to not just myself, but also for my children. And I always like to share that journey because I feel like so much of the work around design is often geared towards just aesthetics and towards things just looking really nice, but we miss on the opportunity to help us emotionally connect to ourselves, help us emotionally connect to other people in our home, and also help us gain clarity on what makes us feel good and what doesn't. So this week, I helped my younger daughter. Um, her name is Luna. I helped her redesign her bedroom because she had a vision, and she literally just came up to me and she's like, Mom, I have a vision and I want to change some things around my room. Now, full disclosure here, she said that to me in uh, with a little bit of reservation because I'm often known for, um, I'm going to, what's the word I'm going to choose? I'm often known for my kids not necessarily wanting my design opinion, okay? Of course. And, and so I've learned to just let them be and let them design their spaces however they like. However, I always make sure I ask them, how does it feel to you in there? So when they come to me and they're like, oh, I don't like my room. I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm always like, okay, well, how does it feel in there, right? And so on this day, we actually... She shared her vision with me and I was like, I think that's a great idea. That's going to look so beautiful and it makes so much more sense. I treat her like a client. And my point in this ramble and this sharing of my story is that what I realized was number one, that she had a connection to how she wanted to feel in her space based on the things she wanted to do. She wanted to spend time um, quiet and away from everyone. So she wanted to create this little nook inside her closet. She wanted to get everything out of her closet and just create a space where she could lay and read and have some really cute lights and just really like create a cocoon away from other people. So we did that. She wanted to make sure she had a space only where her dolls would be and she could not just put him away in a basket, tuck him somewhere when it was time to clean up, but that she could display them and play with them. And so she set up her top bunk bed all for her dolls. They're all up there laying down or sitting up inside a canopy. And what I was able to see as I stepped back as my quote unquote role of designer, but was there just to hold space for her and help her create her vision was that She's actually, their kids are so incredibly um, creative. She actually said this to me while we were doing that. She said like, mom, you know, adults should really listen more to kids because kids have more imagination than adults. And, and I was like, I think that's totally true and super wise. And I love the vision you have. And I'm just here helping you. This isn't even my vision at all. I'm just here helping you make it happen. My point is that in her role of taking charge of her space, in her role of knowing what felt good to her in her room and what she wanted to do, what happened after it was really beautiful. And what happened after was that she went from 
feeling anxious, restless, um, you know, all week long. We've had that for a couple of weeks because we've had some interesting weeks around here. But for a couple of weeks, she's been restless, anxious, um, cannot settle down, cannot focus on one activity at a time. Um, just a general sense of discomfort within herself. And creating these sacred spaces in the rooms, creating these sacred spaces that don't just look good. We didn't even buy anything. We just used what she had in her room and rearranged it, created special zones for play, zones for rest. And this all came through her own awareness. And when I kept asking her, you know, what would you see yourself doing in this room? She wanted to do gymnastics in her room. So we brought her gym mat in the room again. And at the end of the day, I felt her be so in her confidence and so in her um, pride. She was just proud of herself. She was proud of what she did. She was proud of what she visualized. But even more importantly, she was now free from the clutter, from the mess, to be able to just tune into her play and tune into her journaling. And she actually... It actually, the the journey itself of designing the room together and doing it together, redecorating, moving things around together became an opportunity for her to open up to me and share some deep things that were bothering her and some deep things that she was processing from her life, from her friendships, from her family life. And I just wanted to speak about that because I think that when we take the time to teach our children to surround themselves with things that spark joy, like Marie Kondo would say, when we teach them to surround themselves with things that they feel good about, that they enjoy, that they appreciate, it actually opens up a big space in their heart to express how they really are feeling. It opens up room in their imagination to play and be more creative. And it also opens up a sense of belonging and a sense of worthiness that I am worthy of designing my life, that I am worthy of expressing what I like and what my likes and dislikes are, that I am worthy of being loved and of getting your help, mom's help or whoever's help to, you know, bring to fruition an idea. And it all starts with one idea. And from that vision and that idea, so much can happen when we take action on it. And I know that sounds like a big topic related to just redecorating a kid's room, but I would like to invite you to try it. If you have a long weekend this weekend and you have the time to just simply ask your kids, hey, how is your room feeling? It, it, how is it feeling? How does it look to you? Is there any changes you want to make? Tell me about your vision. And let's figure out how to make it happen. Um, when we talk to our kids about having their own sacred space, hey, where do you go to when you feel sad? Where do you sit to write about what you're going through? What is a space that makes you feel really good? So um, that's what I wanted to share. And, you know, the last piece that I've been tying together with this experience of this week and, you know, a lot of other processes as I continue to coach students inside of my academy, inside of my certification program for them to become sacred interior designers themselves is that at the end of the day, the biggest link I'm seeing with other women who want to become sacred designers is that we as children did not feel worthy of our own sacred spaces, that we as children did not feel worthy of our own design of life and our own visions being validated enough. And so to me, this journey of sacred design started with my children and consciously started with my children and creating sacred spaces for them, literally as they were being born. But in the big picture of that, what I really have been doing all these years is reparenting myself and taking care of myself and reminding myself that my visions and my creations are worthy. And so if you're called to do something like that, I would love to chat with you about joining our Sacred Interior Certification Program, where you can learn to do that for yourself and for many, many other families. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Give it a try, have your kids design their room with you and see how it goes.